Hi, I'm Agent Ford. Do you think you can help me solve another true crime mystery? It was a chilling day in July 2015 when a Russian social worker went checking on a patient called Yelanova. After being refused entry into the house by a strange older friend of the patient, Tamara, the social worker headed straight to the police and reported the odd event that occurred at the house. Police would arrive on the scene and upon conducting a search throughout the house, they found no sign of Yelanova. However, they would discover a messy bathroom, a torn curtain, and a bloody knife. A further search would reveal the remains of a human body wrapped in a blue fabric. 67-year-old Tamara was then taken into custody for the possible murder and dismembering of a body. Several murder cases have flooded the news in the past decade, but it is not every day you come across a gripping headline involving an elderly, repeated murderer. Today, we are going to discuss the case of Tamara Samsonova, also known as the Granny Ripper. The 67-year-old retired woman is said to have murdered more than 10 people, most of whom were drugged and butchered. Born April 26, 1947, in Kransnoyarsk, Kray, Russia, Tamara Mitrofanovna Samsonova grew up and concluded her high school education in Russia. She would relocate to Moscow, enrolling in the Moscow State Linguistic University. She was fluent in English, German, and Russian, and would spend the best year of her life working at the Grand Hotel Europe through a travel agency called Intourist. This was her steady job for the next 16 years before retiring. Tamara married Alexei Samsonova in 1971, and shortly after, they moved to St. Petersburg. In 2000, her husband vanished, leading Tamara to alert Russian authorities. Searches were conducted and interrogations were held, but the husband was not found dead or alive. Before she committed any crime, Tamara lived with 79-year-old Valentina Yelanova as a caregiver. Tamara would grow fond of Yelanova as they resided in the same apartment in St. Petersburg. She lived with her for quite some time, even writing about her in her journal, I love Valya. She would often tell her diary, Valya being the pet name she used to refer to Yelanova. This hinted at a happy friendship that would last for quite some time, if only. That was true. On July 26, 2015, a Russian social worker came to check on Yelanova. However, the worker would be bluntly refused entrance by Tamara. Now, why would Tamara do that all of a sudden? Did she have something to hide? Unsure of what was up, the social worker headed straight to the police reporting the case. The police stormed the apartment and conducted a search throughout the house. During their investigation, no sign of Yelanova was found. The CCTV cameras would later confirm she never left the house. A further search would reveal an oddly messy apartment and traces of blood that led them to discovering a dismembered body. 67-year-old Tamara would then be taken into custody, where for weeks she remained uncooperative. The apartment's CCTV footage revealed an old crooked figure in a raincoat heading down the stairs with a saucepan in their hand. Another video showed the same figure dragging a piece of wrapped baggage. This figure was confirmed to be Tamara. Over the next few months, Yelanova's remains would be discovered. It's still unclear how Russian authorities came to the finding. Some reports revealed that someone had stumbled upon the remains while on a run with their dog, who started acting strange and alerted to an item wrapped in blue fabric, while other sources claimed the police were conducting a search that led them to the discovery. Whichever is the case, the investigation conducted in Yelanova's apartment confirmed that the blue fabric wrapped around the remains was, in fact, ripped off of Yelanova's curtains. After quite some time, Tamara finally confessed to killing Yelanova. She revealed Yelanova had requested that she'd leave the house, which led to Tamara drugging Yelanova, filling her favorite dish with 50 pills of phenazepam, a drug used in the treatment of schizophrenia and some neurotic disorders. After the medicine started doing their job, Tamara killed her. Giving an account of how the gruesome murder took place, Tamara recounted drugging Yelanova's Oliver salad with 50 pills of phenazepam to weaken her. Upon waking up at 2 a.m., she found Yelanova sprawled on the kitchen floor, half conscious. Yelanova was too large to be dragged to the bathroom, so Tamara began butchering her right there, while Yelanova was still very much alive, though unconscious. In Tamara's own words, I woke up after 2 a.m. and she was lying on the floor, so I started cutting her into pieces. She went on, 
It was hard for me to carry her to the bathroom. She was fat and heavy. I did everything in the kitchen where she was lying. She pulled her limbs apart. She did this one by one, limb by limb, before she chopped off her head. She disjointed her head from her body with repeated fatal blows to the neck with a hacksaw she had borrowed from neighbors years ago. It is believed that she used the bloodied knife to take the lungs out of Yelanova's mutilated corpse. But why, you ask? <laughs> well, this is where it gets creepy. Tamara boiled the head and lungs in a saucepan and then disposed of them. This was very suspicious because the lungs were never retrieved. Russian authorities even commented on this, saying that Tamara wasn't just a serial killer. She could very well be a cannibal, too. When the search was conducted in Yelanova's house, Tamara's diary was found alongside her book on the astrology of dark magic. In her diary, Tamara wrote details of her everyday life, her sleeping and eating habits. Her diary included phrases like, slept badly, drank coffee, and some lyrics from songs, poems, and her so-called philosophical ideas on life. These were written in German, English, and Russian. It's pretty creepy when you think about it because, hell, what average human writes in multiple languages? Tamara's diary included confessions on how she had murdered her tenant, aged 44, a native of Norlisk, whom she had had a quarrel with 12 years earlier. She had dismembered him too, scattering the body parts around the city. I killed my tenant, Volodya, she wrote. I cut him to pieces in the bathroom with a knife, put the pieces of his body in plastic bags, and threw them away in different ports of Frozinski's district. A man's torso had been found 12 years earlier on the same street where she left Yelanova's body. However, the police had no lead, and with no evidence, the case went cold. Upon the discovery of the diary, it was still unclear whether she had really done it. Her diary did record intricate descriptions of the man's tattoos, which were confirmed upon finding his body. The second piece of evidence was his business card found among her belongings at Yelanova's house, and the third was pages ripped from her Astrology of Black Magic book. They were found on the disposed torso. Scrawled in the pages of her diary were multiple cannibalistic murders, all of them spanning two decades. Tamara, the Granny Ripper, was said to have been obsessed with Andre Chicolito, a long-dead serial killer who was nicknamed Red Ripper. He sexually abused, dismembered, mutilated, and killed 52 women and children within 12 years. Although he was executed, psychopaths often eulogize him. Tamara is believed to be a firm fan. She was caught reading and saving news clippings of Chicolito. Tamara's neighbor gave a statement on having witnessed some really bizarre behavior. Tamara would sit topless, her back to the window, for hours. The neighbor was anxious about this because her husband developed a liking, was aroused by this weird behavior. She also reported a sickening, satisfied look on Tamara's face when she recounted her husband's disappearance. Even more sickening is Tamara's nonchalance towards the murders. She was only concerned about her neighbors and the city founding out about her acts. She said to the journalists, I knew you would come. It's such a disgrace for me. All the city will know. She was also captured blowing a kiss to the reporters where she was being interviewed. When asked to address the court, she requested to go outside due to how stuffy the air was. She also mentioned that Valentina Yelanova was supposed to have been her last victim. She did not try to evoke any kind of sympathy and was not shocked or bothered, unsurprisingly, that she had been caught. She confessed to the other murders very quickly, like she knew the end was near. When the judge asked her what she thought about being arrested, she simply told him to decide since, after all, she was guilty and did actually deserve the punishment. When it was announced that she would stay in custody, she started clapping cheerfully. While she refused to divulge where the head of Yelanova and her other victims were, it is believed that she is responsible for at least 13 deaths as similar bagged remains have been found around the area, none identified as her husband. It is still unclear if he ran away because he noticed her problematic behavior or if Tamara killed him. By November 26, 2015, Tamara would undergo several medical examinations and would be confirmed a schizophrenic. In December 2015, she was sent to a specialized psychiatric hospital in Kazan to spend the rest of her years in solitary confinement on the grounds of schizophrenia. 
A case like this has us questioning how we perceive criminals and how the justice system works. It is no doubt that a psychotic young adult or a petrified teenager would pass on as a serial killer. Hardly do we find a 60-something-year-old woman with schizophrenia as a likely culprit. Whichever it is, it's hard to say that we aren't intrigued by the honey-brown eyes and the enticing smile that lurks on the Granny Ripper's face. Perhaps the most charming looks we know also happen to be the deadliest. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and share it with your fellow investigators. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so you never miss a case. With that being said, stay safe, and I'll see you guys at the next crime scene.